Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another technical analysis. It's been two years since we all got our hands on these new shiny gaming boxes. Well, if you bought one in the first place, mind. And as is always the case, driving games and EA form a very large part of any launch window. This was no different with the then Need for Speed rivals hitting launch and being a decent, if not earth-moving launch release within the fast and furious target window. But it did stand out in some of the ways, being one of a very small window of games that hit a native 1080 on Xbox One and aside from concessions with ambient occlusion post effects, it was a near identical game on both with its 30 fps rate and the frostbite engine under the hood roll on two years and another big winter launch window ea ghost and frostbite all return with need for speed and up here is my first contact analysis of the xbox one release early thanks to the joys of ea's vault but worry not as i will cover the other versions at launch to give you the full lowdown but here i am going to go deep with ghost's latest chapter and see just what is new in the game and how it runs on the xbox one so let's start our engine. The game's aim and inspiration is clear with its fast and furious style bad boy racing, mean wet streets, hot cars and even hotter ladies, all sitting safe within its street racing world and like other games you can upgrade, tweak and personalise your ride to within an inch of its life. From custom car parts and spoilers, windscreens, rims, body skirts, even the colour schemes can be amended directly within the RGB values and material levels to get the precise target you desire and relive your Vin Diesel or Paul Walker aspirations and they'll be damn gorgeous when you do. Even though the game shares the same engine and team, this is a real true step up over its last outing and in another league. Now first up the metrics and this game comes in a 1600 by 900p resolution after some very serious counting which is difficult as I said before with such a heavy post process solution and temporal AA solution running on the game which makes this process far more complicated and it runs with a 30 fps rate cap but I'll touch on that later in the video. But with the last game looking good, but having that feeling that it was not port from a last gen base, here we see much better, see higher quality, and a greater range of textures, higher density car models, world scenery, with even more destruction now implemented far more often across the open world that is available to you from the moment your key hits the ignition. But the engine shift, uh, see what I did there? To a full pipeline implemented physically based approximate lighting model has really allowed the game and team's art design to shine. I'm sorry, but these just keep writing themselves. As I talk about in my preview of my hands-on with the EGX version I played on the PS4, I felt the demo was paired back with its visual quality for the sake of a solid performance, and I was correct in that assumption. The final release code I have the pleasure of analysing here shows drastic improvements from that build, and this includes the suspected stochastic screen space effects backed up with an image-based lighting model that allows the wet neon-lit streets to reflect car models, brake light, shop windows, and all manner of specular forms from direct light sources. This is accompanied by the engine's vast post-effects portfolio that gives us a velocity-based motion blur at a per object and camera level, the radial blur delivering that sense of speed almost tunnel view as you shift through your 12 geared car, sliding and drifting as you go. This can be altered by the Y button to have a selection of third person views with one having the drift camera off. Uh, this is simply a more dramatic camera angle that pulls in and shows off your amazing skill and speed. Now, chromatic aberration is also calculated within its buffer pass, just adding to its neon-filled city streets look that also includes great use of bloom and lens flare that is enabled through its complete linear render range, giving the Michael Bay or J.J. Abraham style to its aesthetic. A volumetric light effect is seen on the street lamps of the fog and mist drifting across certain areas, along with crepuscular rays beaming through the sunshine and the trees. This also includes volumetric particle-based smoke, which receives light from other areas including your headlights and street lamps, but this is a screen space voxel calculation. But the impressive image-based lighting in conjunction with an impeccable PBR system is really the game's and engine's highlight in motion. It also gives us a great example of how well implemented per object motion blur with a variable shutter speed that allows both slow and long speeds can be managed to reduce the visible disparity and missing information from a 16 milliseconds to a 33 millisecond frame rate. Throw in those sumptuous rain effects hitting the camera and car running off the bodywork and giving that doff effect on the camera lens, it really is sumptuous. With some additional light bloom off car and bodywork, along with some film grain effect and the 1600 by 900 resolution in conjunction with a temporary projected anti-aliasing, doesn't really ruin the image quality as much as you would think. 
and it really does border on offline CGI with its very well chosen setting with a dark and much more prominent colour schemes allowing the art style to impress and along with its core cool post effects it really delivers right on its target and you can just spend some time admiring the game in motion. Sadly some sacrifices have come with the loss of the Confusion Zone Bokka now being dropped from the previous demos and cutscenes and replaced on the Xbox One with a simple Gaussian Blur filter. Now this is reminiscent of the previous Rivals game which also missed it on the Xbox One and this can be one of the heavier GPU post effects which makes sense it's been dropped here and we'll see if it appears on the PS4 when I get my hands on. The engine is very impressive and versatile, supporting a wealth of modern graphical features, hardware and genres from first person, third person shooters, RPG adventures and out and out open races, it scales incredibly well but its core impressive display is never reduced. Some of this here is that that much longer frame time has allowed the team a much bigger budget with which to deliver the goods and allow the world to be far more dynamic. Also, its intelligent use of frustum cold effects and voxelization is not only a solid and damn right eye-wateringly sumptuous at times, but it's also the kind of tricks and more efficient methods we will see throughout this generation and beyond. Now this calculates the depth of effect and visibility within 3D cubes effectively, allowing a shorter ray march on source direction and occlusion amongst other areas that have the kind of effects we see here, but I will cover more in my head-to-head. -head. And sadly onto the only real negative of the game, aside obviously some of the issues with the gameplay itself and how slow the races can be. Unfortunately on the Xbox One at least, the frame rate and the performance is not as consistent as you would imagine or would have hoped. There are some serious dips down to lows of 25 or 23 at points, these tend to be loading streaming issues and this is where the engine seems to suffer most. There are a couple of points in the analysis where you'll see the frame stutter with heavy cars and some GPU load but predominantly the issues all come from the streaming issues in the engine. Now this is by no means a showstopper but generally while you're driving around you'll get these sudden dips of judders and you'll just feel it all as you race. But it is completely removed from any frame pacing issues we saw in Rivals and it delivers a smooth 30 most of the time. As it stands, Need for Speed is a game that has the instant wow factor visually, allowing you to jump in and enjoy its easy, forgiving control system. This is no simulation. Along with its other engine highlights that mixes real footage with overlaid real-time models, which can sometimes work ever so slightly better than others, but overall the effect is seamless, allowing your own hand-tailored, long-time crafted ride to take centre stage in the game's very well-acted and delivered story sequence. Which only helps immerse you more, and this simple but effective trick is very well done, and and unlike much older games that used it, showing how old this technique really is from classics like Night Trap, Sewer Shark or even more recently with AR games on Vita, 3DS or the iToy 2.0 demos that came with a PS4 camera. The game's PBR system and HDR model allow them to achieve a near identical gamma corrected lighting from the game's assets to match the levels in the video sequences. Throw in some decent ambient contact shadows in conjunction with the sequence's very slow movement means the effects are extremely convincing and the fact that they are not human just allows them to fool us even easier. These base rules are how today's movie effects work so well. Transformers is a great example of this in action. And it is simply another high point from an already very impressive improvement from Ghost Games that allows the players this entire playground to drive, race and explore during twilight and sunrise times, which although this could reduce the longevity of its draw and impact, it does highlight the game in the best possible light most of the time. In the darkest, ironically, it does have a few niggles though with some strange animated work on textures with bushes and trees, some heavy clipping from yourself and cars during races, along with some obvious blending going on during the game, but these and more along with performance improvements could all be patched out in later updates. With its superb screen space effects including the car bouncing headlights and brake lights as you drive and the scenery, in addition to the bounce light coming off of walls of your headlights with the global illumination pass, which also includes the bounce of other cars from your headlights in any smog filled areas as you drive. The atmospheric scattering and PBR atmosphere in the game is just like everything else, so realistic and incredibly well done. And yet again another great example of just how important lighting is within the game's impact. I know that I said I would announce the winner of the Assassin's Creed on my very next video but it's only been a day and I thought I'd leave it a little bit longer so I will announce it on the weekend video but please keep them coming I've been reading them and chuckling to myself so very good indeed. As always I hope you guys and girls enjoyed this if you did then please hit that like and subscribe button I really appreciate each and every one of you that does and it will allow you the first contact 
with my new feeds as I put them on YouTube. You guys and girls take care, and I'll see you very soon on the next one. Making all sorts of excuses already. Good job, man. Peace. <laughs>